My name is Mark Chalmers, and I'm president and CEO of Energy Fuels. And Energy Fuels is a unique company. It is a critical mineral company. We're building a critical mineral hub um, uh, centering around uranium production. So we have a long history of producing uranium. And um, Matt, it's great to catch up with you again in the new year. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to a great 2025. Well, there's a lot of moving parts, Mark. So uh, I, I bet you are. Um, let's let's just kind of kick off for the I guess the, the news of the moment, which is obviously the 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 that whole nation discussions that you've been having. You to remind people what that was about, and you know what the outcome has is. Well, if you go back about five, five or six months, um, the the Navajos expressed concern about transporting uranium ore across the reservation, which we have done, or these assets of this company have done for for decades without incident. And um, there was a bit of a, a, a up, a, you know, upper R from a number of people on that. And um, so for the last several months, we, we, we had a number of discussions with the Navajos. I think it was 10 or so meetings, very productive. And we just wanted to, to, to make sure they understood that this was not something to be afraid of, that we've done it for, for years and that we were prepared to do um, other safeguards to, to make them even more comfortable uh, and so it resulted in what I believe is a landmark um, a, a agreement with the Navajos um, in that regard on safe transport of uranium across the reservation uh, at a higher level than even a uh, standard that has ever been done. Uh, and also um, our uh, ability to work with the Navajos to start cleaning up some of these abandoned uranium mines that have been sitting there for decades that haven't been cleaned up. And this is where it's a win-win for both groups. A great outcome. And and I'm I'm really excited about it. Well yeah, yeah. I mean it's a, it's always good when there's a kind of it's a win-win. You know, but both, both sides are um, happy with the outcome of that. Um it also I th I think in this day and age also stops any kind of side commentary about, you know, what what is and is not. Um, we, we say all too much of that. But let, let's talk about specifics here. So you, you were obviously trans transporting um, or you know out of out of the mines, and that that had been done done for some time successfully. But you referenced there the kind of cleanup. Again, remind remind me what that is about. You know, and what your role could be. Well, the cleanup goes back into the Cold War um, with a number of mines on the reservation, not just on the reservation, but all across the Western U.S. that were really um, artifacts of uh, the Cold War and the support from the U.S. government. So the U.S. government funded these projects. And they were never cleaned up because they were mined in the 50s and 60s and maybe early 70s when there weren't any permits required. And so they've been sitting for decades uncleaned up. So um, what our role is, is these mines have nothing to do with the energy fuels. Um, but what we can do is we can take some of that low-grade material and we can uh, process it at the White Mason uh, Mill and recover the uranium uh, and have a safe home for it in our tailings facility. So... So it's really, uh, uh, it, it, and produce uranium from it. So it, it, again, this is something we've looked at for, for a number of years, trying to help the Navajo Nation. And so the, the, this, this agreement does, one, makes the Navajos more comfortable with the transport of uranium ore, but also provides mechanisms for us to help the Navajos start cleaning up some of these mines. And they can start doing that effectively now because we can take that low-grade ore now uh, and have the permits to take it. And that's what's so exciting about it is we can actually come up with a really great outcome with cleaning up some of these sites that they have been almost begging to clean up for okay. decades. Okay, so this is, this is proper win-win. This is, this is a, a, in effect, a, a gentleman's shake, shake of the hand. I'd say, look, we understand, oh, you know, we understand now you know, what you've been doing. Um, can we talk about this kind of clean up here? So there's no no penalties, no kind of um, no slap in the hand for you. This is a genuine trying to make it work for both parties and, and getting to that point. So what does this clean up do for both sides? I mean, is 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 there money involved? Is is it a case? I mean, because obviously there's a lot of material lying around. So how does it all work and what's the regulation around that? Yeah, well, initially we're going to take material for free. Okay, we've committed to 10,000 tons of material for free. 
Um, but there is a large uh, trust fund, about $2 billion, to help clean up the Navajo Nation. And in due course, we'd, we'd hope to have a fair fee to help with that. Um, but one of the most important things is, is that you know, the media loves to, to, to jit up the conflicts between energy fuels and the Navajo Nation or other indigenous groups. And we work together with a win-win. So it really takes the, the uh, wind out of the sails of a lot of the NGOs that we actually came to an agreement. And in the release, there's some really solid statements from the Navajo Nation and the governor of Arizona for, again, a great outcome for all those involved, including the state of Arizona. So, so it's, it's, um, it, it's just an important move for, for everyone. Okay, so we're moving forward. Um, appreciate you, you being so frank with that one. Um, just very quickly, oh, we, we better go to Uranium, but I really, really want to talk to you about the, the railroad side of things. We, we had a catch up for Christmas or over Christmas, I should say, um, on, on that front, but Uranium first. Okay, you, you, you've, you've produced a lot of Uranium that, and, and your various assets produce a lot of Uranium. have been recently doing a couple of JV um, projects um, as well, we know, but Uranium market gone off the ball slightly. Is that, does that, how do, how, do you, how do you kind of feel about that one? Are you still enthused by the uranium space? Are you looking towards uh, rare earths instead? I mean, yeah. Well, I, I think the uranium space has never looked better, but the price has retreated. And, and I think the price has to reverse itself because the cost of replacing the pound of uranium. So, I mean, this is an example of when and why you have some long term contracts. Um, that you sign that uh, you know provides some protection in a down market. So, um, but yeah, I think I think the fundamentals still look great for uranium. Uh, the price has come off, um, but I think it needs to reverse itself. Uh, you know, we'll start um, shipping ore from the Pinion Plain mine um, in February. Uh, that's the highest grade mine out there in the United States. Uh, so we're really excited about that. I built the mine in the '80s. So it's a long time coming for me personally and both for the company. Uh, and we're starting up some of these other mines. So, so I think the dynamics and the fundamentals for uranium are, are still excellent. Uh, I think that a lot of the companies have struggled to, to get their production up. I mean, you're seeing it with just about everyone. And, and, and the, the only reason we were struggling is because of this, this Navajo, uh, working out this deal with the Navajos and it took some time, but we're ready to roll now. So, um, but yeah, we're very much a uranium company. We're going to be focused on uranium revenue for the next few years while we ramp up the rare earths, which is also extremely exciting. Okay, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So let's just remind people of the, the business model, the revenue business model that you have for uranium. Clearly, you've got a, you know, a whole bunch of mines and you've got this you know this uh, critical minerals hub in the shape of White Mesa, which I was lucky enough to go to last year. Um, but what's the intent in terms of the, the various silos of, you know, vertical silos of, of revenue for you? What are you looking at? Well, we're, we're right around that million pounds production rate right now with the, with the mining of the mines we have. Um, so depending on what the uranium price you're getting, you know, 70, $80 million a year of revenue, we're ramping that up, pointing that towards 2 million pounds, uh, it's still going to take us some time to get there, but but we're pushing that way, um, and um, and 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 we're also uh, doing the permitting of a number of our other development projects as well that can take us up in due course to around five six million pounds per year. So so everything we're doing right now doesn't require a lot of capital. Um, most of the permits are in place, and we're around a million pounds moving towards two. It's going to take some time, but then we have these other big assets. So. So we're always going to be a uranium producing company and we're focused on that regard. And that is our revenue stream for the next, particularly next few years as we ramp that up while we're getting these other rare earth assets ready to go looking out in that 2027, 28 and on period. Okay. And, and, what, and what about some of the other kind of more nuanced models? Like, um, you know, we, we talked about, to, you know, toll. Um, we've talked about, you know, buying, we've, um, you know, you looked at other kind of JV structures. So just in terms of trying to understand how you kind of milk, milk all of those resources at the same time, rather than kind of, you know, let some of them linger a bit. Yeah, because why Mesa is the only mill that's operable in the region, fully staffed and, and, and operating right now. Um, yeah, we are looking at some um, select uh, purchases of ore um, that will also feed into the mill. 
Uh, and we do have a, a total million agreement with ISO Energy. They haven't um, provided any ore yet, but they will, I think, in due course. So, um, so yeah, we've got these other sources. We also have the alternate feed, uh, which has been a low-cost, long-term um, uh, recycle business that we've successfully executed. So really, there is no company to compare to when it comes to how we produce uranium and where we get the uranium from. It's kind of interesting, actually. Look, I looked at, you know, obviously Peninsula recently in the headlights for all the wrong re headlines for all the wrong reasons. Um, and some of the other kind of developers who are maybe not working to the timelines they had hoped for or the market has hoped for. It, it just sort of driving towards this impending shortage, this deficit in supply numbers going out to 26 27 not right up to 30 it's just not happening at the moment because everyone seems to need price discovery and without that nothing's moving it's good for you well matt i've been saying a long time that, that watch and see how everything ramps up here okay history says it's hard and guess what right now people are experiencing hard and it is hard it's hard for everybody, including energy fuels. I mean, the transport was something we didn't expect, but now we've got that resolved and we're moving on. Um, but it's hard to get people uh, in places like Wyoming. You know, there's a, there's a number of players up there. They're all fighting over the, the few people that have uranium experience. And unfortunately, down in places like White Mesa, we don't have that issue. So, um, no, it's hard. And um, there's 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 going to be more delays coming. Um globally um and more difficulty producing uranium so that's why i think it bodes well for the future of uranium prices and filling the gap of the shortfall right okay so uranium uh, investors listening to this you know i, I think have a little bit of patience it, it is it is coming it's a bit it's a bit hard for a lot of people who've been listening to the same message since 2019 but um it, def it definitely kind of feels i think now with the lack of ability to actually get into production and kind of get into that kind of con concentrate enrichment side of things as well in the u.s um is a bit of a mess coming down the line uh which is good uh, for those who can um look i i, I really was meant to be a conversation about the, the navajo agreement but i'm i'm taking advantage of you with the, with, on the uranium conversation but i do want to flick to rarest when i was there in september i saw i think it was about 40 tons of ndpr and probably the same again in circuit um technically how have you gone about, you know, proving or allowing people to test that you are able to do what you say you're able to do on the uh, rarer sites side of things? Well, we've been sending out the NDPR for qualification with a number of um, uh, groups, um, you know, around the world, um, and it's coming back with very favorable um, uh, responses that it meets their specification and 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 they like the material and they particularly like the material because it's produced in the United States. So so we're we're actively looking at this next metals and alloys and and in towards magnets, uh, which I've talked about for a few years now. Um and um and for the the fact that we commissioned that plant at the beginning of 2024, um, I mean it, it exceeded everybody's expectations, even our own, uh, and surprised a lot of people in the world that we are able to get that up and running and running so quickly material that came out of that plant like seven eight nine days after we started it up uh, was meeting specification for some of these potential off tapers so so we're really excited about that we we um we we've got a um a, a, a dfs um that we've launched uh we actually um are advancing that for a a, a dfs at, at the white mesa mill for the phase two which is building um, um, a, a plant that's effectively the same size as Linus is in in Malaysia. So we've, we've launched that. And, um, and meanwhile, we're pro producing uranium at the mill as we speak. Okay, so there's things, so you know, some on the test side, so there are people testing product and liking what they see um, at the moment. Um, in terms of before the kind of DFS comes out, and obviously you'll need to then sort of work out um, you know, feed and FID and, you know, the build period and so forth. Between between now and um, that build out, w what's the opportunities for you here? You've kind of got a Trump government just stepped into power, making some pretty swift moves across the board. Um, critical minerals still part of the story, you know, taken, you know, picked up where Biden left off, which is 
critical minerals important? They've got to work out how they do it. What's your role in all of this? What could it be? Well, Matt, with the new administration, um, we are telling the new administration that energy fuels can do more to, 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 to fix the United States critical mineral shortage in their term, uh, working together. And that is a powerful statement. But when you look at the, um, you know, the, the 10 plus critical elements that we can currently produce or will be producing, the assets that we've secured, we are in an outstanding position to solve a lot of the country's um, critical minerals uh, issues um, with our company. And, and is critical minerals, minerals still high on the list of things that they want to solve for? Like we, we've seen Trump come in with Elon Musk and Doge. They are like, cut, they seem to be cutting costs across the board. Does this still stay on the table? Uh, is it still important to them? Yes, it's in some of his executive orders. Critical minerals, rare earths are mentioned. So we think we have set ourselves up in an incredible position to hit the ball out of the park. Um, you know you know that we took a bit of hits on some of our uranium investors because we were doing this diversification strategy. And uh, now it's our time to, 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 to really roll here. And I'm excited because we did it for a reason. And we did it because we had the ability to process these critical elements in the United States of America. And what, are you, what are you going to be able to say to your shareholders um, this year? Because at the moment, you're being valued on the uranium. And I think the uranium alone, right? I think a lot of rare earth companies out there are a bit hammered. They haven't been able to show uh, the ability to do anything with their with their projects. You're, you're obviously at that point with White Mesa where you're you're spitting out NDPR at very large volumes, I, I may add, compared to compared to those who others who can um but you're gonna need to say something to the market like i've got a deal with someone to, to take our ndpr we've got the ability to produce um more volume on that we've got u.s government contracts we've got yeah, what, what do you think it's going to say what do you think you're going to be able to kind of talk to if you're saying to the u.s government hey we can solve your problem in in this term what are you going to tell the market yeah well Number one, we're producing uranium. We've got the Navajo Agreement signed. Um, you know, we acquired base resources October 2nd. We had the suspension lifted that had been in place for five years. We have an MOU with commercial terms with the Madagascar government, and we're working on the binding agreements, and there's an amendment to what they call the large-scale mining law, is work in progress, and it's going quickly and well, and in a focused way. And so we're going to be able to talk about a lot of things because of the pieces that we have. We're doing an FID at Donald in Australia. We've launched the FID on Tole Ara uh, in Madagascar. We're doing the definitive feasibility study for the phase two Linus scale plant at White Mesa, and we're producing uranium. Um, so I don't know how more exciting it can get and we're still valued as a uranium company, and we've got B and plus of other stuff that's coming down the pike. So, I mean, we're, it's all unfolding the way we've planned it to unfold. And right now, the timing couldn't be better with the change of administration. Mark, thank you very much for your time today. See you soon.